Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Your boy Jay Marston is back at it again. Outside in this cold ass weather. Smoking a black amount as usual. What else is new? <laughs> Happy New Year to y'all. Hope y'all having a good New Year. I know I am. And I'm pretty sure y'all have your New Year's resolutions, as do I. I got about three of them. And my first New Year's resolution is to quit smoking tobacco for good. That means black and mild, cigarettes, all that shit. I finished my last pack of cigarettes not too long ago, and now I couldn't think of a better way to cap off the new year than to smoke my final black and mild. I'm about to throw this joint after a few puffs. This isn't goodbye forever, this is just goodbye for now. I smoke them every now and then, but for right now, I think it's time for me to take a break. My second New Year's resolution is to finally move out of my parents' house and get my own place. I've been living here way too goddamn long. It's my birthday month, I'm turning 23 this month, and I don't wanna be in here I don't want to be here longer than I should be. I already been here too long. I should have moved out at 21 or even 18, but I didn't have money at the time because at that time I was irresponsible with my money. I was blown through that shit fast. But now I'm managing my money a lot better than I used to. You know what I'm saying I'm saving up. I got a cash card. I'm using the cash cap. <laughs> I'm using the cash shop and the direct deposit on that is excellent. It takes two days for your direct deposit to go through. I love it. Got my first direct deposit not too long ago, and I used some of the money from that direct deposit to buy a whole new TV. And that TV just came today. Really? A few moments later. This is why I don't smoke when it's windy outside, man. My shit straight up blows out like every two minutes. It's ridiculous. Anyway, back to my New Year's resolutions. My third New Year's resolution is to get married. You know, and I'm gonna leave it at that for now. I actually got a special vlog planned sometime next week. So uh, be on the lookout for that. And if you wonder who I was comparing myself to, I was comparing myself to John Marston. If you don't know who he is, he's the main protagonist of a rock star game called Red Dead Redemption. He's also on Red Dead Redemption 2 with Arthur Morgan and the Dutch Vandalin gang. And that's just in case people don't know who he is. And if you don't know what he looks like, here's a picture. That's John Marston. And here's a picture of me in the hair salon, mid perm, almost bone pleat. I was sitting underneath the hair dryer because my shit was running in your mom's vagina on a Saturday night after you receiving the BBC. <laughs> edit that out. I ain't gonna edit that out. I've said worse. Well, yeah, I'll, tell me I don't look like John Marston in that picture. Or at least Como just got one of them. Or both. I kind of look like both minus the wrinkles and the scars. Well, I do got uh, this little thing on the side of my face. Or is it on this side? Nah, it's on this side. You probably can't see it. Let me turn. I'm, I'm pretty sure y'all can see it on the side of my face. I don't know what the hell happened there. I had that shit since I was little. I might have ran into a wall or some shit. I don't remember. But anyway, while I'm out here, let me talk about my New Year. I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all did the same thing y'all usually do on New Year's Eve. And that is sit in front of the TV, have the channel to the right channel where there's this huge concert and celebration going on and you got a drink in your hand and you're waiting on the countdown. You're drunk as fuck by the end of the countdown. You know, that's pretty much every New Year's Eve. Me on the other hand, this is the first New Year's Eve where I was actually working. I was working as a coach check attendant at the Gaylord and we had a job similar to this last year, but this year wasn't as bad. Last year was a disaster, but this year, you know, just like last year, we dealt with a bunch of drunk ass people. <laughs> and they're probably just not getting over their hangover, which usually lasts about a week. We was dealing with a thousand plus coats. 
working as a coach at contender is all fun and games until you're dealing with a bunch of pissed off ass guests. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You don't get them their jacket as fast as they expect you to. They're going to start going off. And they're going to start bum rushing all the coat racks, coming behind the tables. And yeah. Y'all know how it goes. Last year was a complete disaster. I don't remember which hotel we was working in. It, was, I mean, it might have been the Washington Hotel, one of them. I'm not sure. I just know this hotel was downtown somewhere. This is around the time when we was using paper tickets, which I'm happy that we don't use those anymore. We actually use kiosks now. I'm talking about the kiosks in a second. But we was using paper tickets around that time. And usually the paper tickets end up getting lost and you know, people are too lazy to take a picture of it. Yeah, people end up losing their tickets over that damn alcohol. You drink too much, you pretty much shit out of luck. Hey, bars, that shit rhyme. Usually what we do, on the job. They give us a set time to be there an hour before the event starts. And during that hour, we spend that time tagging coat hangers and hanging them up on the rack. And we put them in order, 50 hangers per rack, one to 50 on one rack, 50 to 100 on the next rack, so on and so forth. It's not like I said nuts rack. <laughs> the next rack, I'm congested a little bit. We had a few newbies on the job and uh, they started taking coats and they was just hanging them, hanging them up on just about any rack. They didn't care. They was just there to get a paycheck and that was it. They took those racks, not the racks, they took those coats, hung them up on random hangers and it started with the first rack. It went all the way to the last. And the shit got so packed that racks started falling. People started bum rushing the tables, trying to find their jackets and shit. It was the worst. And when you have a bad job, usually people blame it on the workers, but they didn't blame it on the workers. They actually blamed it on the supervisor, the manager on the job, Teresa. And she was one of the happiest slash nicest people that you would ever meet. You do not want to get on her bad side. You get on her bad side and you piss her off. You know you done fucked up. And I think it's about time to throw this. Sure gonna miss you. It's my last black I'm out. It's not goodbye forever. It's just goodbye for now. Bars. We vowed to never have a job like the job that we had last year. So this year, we had another big job that was similar to that, but it wasn't as bad. We was able to manage better than we did last year and just like last year we had a few newbies on the job they kind of mixed up some of the coats but in the middle of the job before people started looking for their coats before people came in to check their coats out some of the workers which I'm actually happy about actually put the coats that were out of order in order which is good you want to do that as quickly as you possibly can make sure all the coats are in order so when the people come and check them coats out, you can go in, you can grab whatever their tag number is and bring it back to them safe and you ain't got to worry about no bullshit. And also, unlike last year, instead of using paper tickets, we vowed to pretty much stop using paper tickets and we started using the kiosks. This job that we was just on, I mean, usually the kiosks work fine, but you know, when the internet is bad, the kiosks start to act up a little bit. They start to act a little bit retarded. Sometimes the tags won't properly register, you know. But the thing that we do with the kiosk, it's pretty simple, really. You say your phone number is your claim ticket. They put their phone number in, they hit confirm, it takes a picture of them, the kiosk does. And you take the jacket, and before you hang it up on the hanger, you take a hanger with a tag, and you scan the tag, you hold the jacket out like this in front of, not in front of, but behind the kiosk, and you tap the tag, and it takes a picture of the jacket. So it remembers the person, and it remembers the jacket. And they get a confirmation text on their phone, uh, and it says their tag number, and it says, thank you for choosing Capital Code Check, or something like that. That's what I work for, by the way, Capital Code Check. So they get that number. Sometimes people don't get that number because of how bad the connection is. So we pretty much just gotta, you know, just ask what their tag number is. If you can remember your tag number, that's great. 
But because people were so drunk, most people forgot their damn tag numbers. What surprised the hell out of me is that even though some people were so fucked up, some people did remember their tag number. You know, their phone number wouldn't register, you know, and a couple other things wouldn't register. But the moment they remembered their tag number and they remembered the description of the jackets, that actually made me very happy because we got to that job quick and painless. Last year was a complete and total disaster. This year, we was able to manage a whole lot better. But because people were so drunk and because some people's coats and shit got mixed up again, people, I'm not gonna say they started bum resting the tables. When we couldn't find their coats, we let them come back so they could find it themselves, but we had to chaperone them so they wouldn't do nothing. But some people went unnoticed and some people got their shit stolen. Some people got purses, wallets, and money stolen. And just like last year, the workers don't even take the blame for it. They blame it on the supervisor because she's supposed to be supervising all of us. And all that shit weighs on her college, which meaning, I said her college, weighs on her conscience, which means she got to pay all that shit back. So, like, if somebody stole $9,000, she would have to find a way to replace that $9,000. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? You got to be careful when you're doing this coach check shit. It's all fun and games until it turns into a disaster. That's pretty much how I spent my, how I spent my New Year. Worked from 7 to 4 a.m. 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. I didn't get home until about 5. I'm going to end on this note. Donald Trump, here's hoping he gets in peace sometime this year. If he doesn't get in peace this year, he's more than likely going to run, not run, but he's more than likely going to serve the rest of his term. As long as he doesn't try to run for a second term, I think we'll be in the clear. Well, we more than likely won't be because you, know, you think the last two years was bad. That ain't shit compared to what's finna happen within the next two years. His first reign of terror was out of this world disgusting. But now it's just gonna get worse. We need Trump out of office as quickly as possible. And it wouldn't surprise me as rich as he is if he just paid off the CIA and the FBI and the ATF and whatever other secret agency is out there. It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if he paid them off and bought out the entire Congress and government, House of Representatives and shit, just so he can do whatever the fuck he wants, whenever he wants, and how he wants. Because he should have been impeached. If Bill Clinton can get impeached after getting his dick sucked in the Oval Office, Trump can get impeached for all the bullshit that he did. And Bill, they said that he got impeached for sexual assault. He got into it with his secretary, Monica Lewinsky, who is fine as hell still to this day. They say black don't crack. What about white don't crack? She's still looking good. I ain't gonna lie. I just watched um, Bird Box the other night. Sandra Bullock is still looking good. I know I just fucked up her last name. Bullock. I said Bullock. But Sandra Bullock is still looking good. 54 years old, and she still looks just as good as she did in the 90s. When Bill Clinton got impeached for sexual assault. What Donald Trump did, way worse. So how he hasn't gotten in peace yet is beyond me. Here's hoping that his reign of terror doesn't get worse from here, but it probably will. Who knows? Whoever runs in 2020, I hope that you're going to be serious. Because at this point, the presidency is a joke. You know what I'm saying? Every, every president that we had after Bill Clinton didn't do shit. Bush didn't do a goddamn thing. He was dealing with Iraq most of his goddamn term. Those eight years that he was president, he got shoes thrown at him and shit, and he got roasted throughout his entire term. He ain't did a goddamn fucking thing. Obama, when he was president, as cool as he was, and we all loved Obama, he ain't do shit either. Well, the only things that he did do was the shit that he did for white people. What did he do for black people? Nothing. Look it up. Trump, same thing. He ain't did a goddamn fucking thing while he was in office. Not anything positive anyway. Everything that he did came with negativity and hate. And he's been getting roasted even before he even ran. I just hope that he gets impeached sometime this year. As quickly as humanly possible, because we do not need another two years of this nigga in office. Straight up. Anyway, I think that's going to be it. It's cold as shit. My hands are starting to get stiff. That's the only part of my body that really gets cold when it's this cold. It's like 40-something degrees right now, which is my ideal weather, really. You know, I like being outside in the cold weather. It feels good to me. Boy, you crazy. I know. I'm just 
used to the cold. You know, I, I'm a winter baby and I, I adapted to it. I don't really get sick. Only time I get sick is when I'm around my brother for some reason. I got a cold from him not too long ago. And that was the third cold that I had in 2018. I just had to end the year with a damn cold and I even worked with the cold. Ridiculous. I will never understand why black people send their kids to school sick. Never. I ain't gonna never send my kids to school sick. If you got a headache or a stomachache, you stand your ass home until you get better. You got a cold, you stand your ass home. You get a cold, you pretty much contagious and the other people can catch that shit. I'm not sending my son to school so he can get somebody else sick. You know? The black people don't, they don't give a fuck. If you got a cold, you got a headache, you got a stomachache, whatever, your ass going to school. Unless you got a stomach virus or a fever or your ass is dying, you, you going to school. I will never understand black parents when it comes to that. See, white people, they more lenient on their kids. You know, they don't really care if you miss a school day because of a sickness. If you're not feeling good, you staying home. That's as simple as that. But anyway, this is a long vlog, 21 minutes. Hey. Hope y'all enjoyed this. This is pretty much my New Year vlog. I'm not really going to be doing the cuts that I usually do for the Life of Jay. Speaking of Life of Jay, I, I am bringing that back. Season 2 will start up sometime next week. This video will probably be up on Monday, early. Maybe between like 4 and 5 o'clock, something like that. Uh, Life of Jay will be up next Friday. Episode 9, part of Season 2. I'm going to continue from Episode 9 instead of starting over from Episode 1. That actually be the story. I pretty much mixed up my story times with the life of Jay and I could just be out here walking around just telling stories. I already pre-recorded like four stories. The first story is going to be a story about me getting fired from my job. Second story is a story about me getting kicked out of school, I think. And then the third one is my first fight and then the fourth one is about me like almost getting robbed. It's pretty much a robbery gone retarded. I got robbed by some retards. Not really retarded, but they got the mind of a retard and that's exactly how they pretty much that's exactly how it played out you know you're dealing with weed heads that's always asking asking for you for money you know you're bound to get robbed someday but anyway that being said i'm out man peace fuck donald trump and i can't get enough of saying that fuck donald trump it's not just a catchphrase it's real life fuck donald trump and chill out with that maga shit in my comment section that make America great again shit. When was America ever great to begin with? And I'm gonna leave on that note. Toodles! Bye, have a great time.